I, I want to begin by saying what a shame it is that uh, we in the opposition uh, have only uh, about five minutes to speak to a piece of legislation at second reading uh, that is critical uh, when it comes to a specific region in the country. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a crying shame that the people of the Yukon can't depend on their Member of Parliament to bring forward opposing voices to Bill S-6. And while we're honoured to do that, I want to point out that it is this Conservative government that has taken away time, time that we could, uh, that we could use to share the voices of the people from the Yukon, to share the voices of First Nations in the Yukon, and instead has chosen to try and muzzle them and silence them in this House. Mr. Speaker, it is clear that the people of the Yukon have not given the mandate or the authority to this federal government to uh, implement Bill S-6. This uh, Bill S-6 uh, will serve to dismantle YESA, which belongs to the people of the Yukon, including First Nations. It was developed by Yukon, by Yukoners and for the Yukon. Yukoners, including First Nations and industry, are now saying that they do not want or need the changes imposed on them by S-6. And they are actively campaigning against it in astonishing numbers. In fact, Mr. Speaker, contrary to the rhetoric we've heard in this House, we know that there have been no public consultations on Bill S-6 uh, at any point by this federal government in the Yukon. It does not enjoy First Nations consent, and for this reason alone, it is incumbent upon the House not to pass this bill. It is unlawful for the federal government to impose regulations upon a, re upon a regulatory body, such as YESA, a YESA board, the YESA board, pardon me, without the consent of Yukon's First Nations. I'd like to read into the record Grand Chief uh, Ruth Massey's comments. Quote, this whole process attacks the integrity of our constitutionally protected agreements, and Yukon First Nations will stand by their agreements, even if it means going to court. They give us no choice. We did not sign our agreements to implement them in the courts, but we will protect them. End of quote. And Mr. Speaker, this speaks to a broader agenda put forward by this government, which is to attack First Nations' rights uh, to as a result of their failure of consultation and, uh, uh, and achieving consent, and, in and, and instead pushing First Nations to pursue costly litigation that in some cases is difficult for them uh, to afford, uh, a process that only makes money for uh, federal government lawyers that choose to fight First Nations in, in, in court. Mr. Speaker, the people of, of the Yukon and First Nations alike are baffled by the content of Bill S-6. Yes, YESA recently underwent, underwent a five-year review through which recommendations were made. However, the four amendments, uh, however, four amendments are the cause of concern appeared nowhere as recommendations in the five-year re review. The four changes are contrary to the intent of the land claims agreement and undermine the neutrality of the YESA process. Once again, Grand Chief Ruth Massey said, Quote, Yukon First Nations have met with the Government of Canada, specifically the Minister of Aboriginal and Northern Affairs, and have asked them to remove four problematic amendments proposed to the Yukon Environmental and Socioeconomic Assessment Act, established in Chapter 11 of the Umbrella of Final Agreement and each final land claim agreement of the 11 Yukon First Nations. Mr. Speaker, it is not only Yukon First Nations that are opposed to Bill S-6. Yukoners have been coming out to public meetings and showing their opposition uh, in, in public venues in a, in a significant way. But it's also industry and members of, of, of uh, industry that have been clear in their opposition as well. And I would like to read into the record a quote from a letter sent by the CEO of the Casino Mining Corporation, Paul West Sells. Quote, on behalf of Casino Mining Corporation, I am putting forward our company's concerns regarding the fragility of intergovernmental relations in the Yukon surrounding Bill S-6 and the negative impact this is having on our territory's mineral industry. It is imperative for Casino that the Yukon Environmental and Socioeconomic Assessment Act has the broad support of all governments in order to ensure the confidence of both project proponents and Yukon residents in the YESA process and to facilitate investments in the territory. 
So there you have it, Mr. Speaker. I also want to make a final comment with regards to this Fraser Institute report that we keep hearing about. Mr. Speaker, this has been proven to be a flawed report. In fact, the day that uh, it came, uh, uh, became public, uh, the, the extent to which this report was flawed, uh, the Fraser Institute itself removed uh, uh, its uh, data collecting uh, uh, portion on, on its website. Mr. Speaker, finally, this is about standing in opposition to a federal government that is seeking to silence the voices of Northern Canadians and Northern First Nations in our country. I'm proud to stand with the NDP. We are standing with Yukoners and Yukon First Nations and saying no to Bill S-6. Well